How do you think Brody Croft looked today? Um, thought he looked like Brody Croft, but in a better coloured jersey. just want to be a great friend and if we can all try and be a bit of a better friend from time to time I think we have a bit of a better place to live in. The Lot Pod is kindly sponsored by Fast Signs. Fast Signs are an established family run business who have been providing businesses around Leeds and West Yorkshire with effective signs and graphics for almost 30 years. Fast Signs are passionate about helping customers make a statement with signs that are eye-catching, effective and delivered fast. Hi everyone, welcome to the Lot Pod, the Leeds Rhinos Lot 17A podcast, kindly sponsored by Fast Signs. I'd like to thank you, Fast Signs, for their continued support. They came, as, and as a, they came in as a new sponsor for the 2024 season and they've been fantastic supporters of the Lot Pod on this platform, so we thank Fast Signs for their support. Sporting Director Announcement Podcast, Ian Bleas, has been confirmed recently by the Rhinos as the new Sporting Director, so we're here to discuss that. Joining me, as always, my right-hand man, my co-host, but our amazing Statsman, Statman Reese. how are you? I'm on the wrong side. I'm not your right-hand man, am I? We've, we my left-hand man. We haven't, we, haven't, <laughs> we haven't fought that through. Um, Go over there next yeah, time. Yeah, next time, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. It feels natural over here. I don't know why. How are you? Um, yeah, all good, thank you. All good. Excited to be in a new place, but I won't, I won't spoil your introduction of it. Chris is also <laughs> here with us. Producer Chris, how are you? Yeah, very well. Very new, well studio. new studio. Come on, new let's studio. talk about it. Again. <laughs> what do you think? Leave a comment below. What do you think of our brand new... Lot Pod Studio. Um, we've got a desk, I think that's. We've got a I, desk. I know, I know you had a desk. Was it for the well, St. Ellen's? Yeah, well, that was, it wasn't screwed together though, was it? It wasn't screwed together, and I think that was me, Eddie, and Josh going. We don't really want to talk about this game, so we're going to procrastinate <laughs> until we built the desk around. And hope the desk collapses, uh, yeah. so we have something yeah. else to talk and about. And then we ended up having to talk about it, but yeah, um, it's a classic studio because it's one of those things where, from this angle. It looks looks, nice. looks bloody good. Just you don't want to see behind the camera. We won't be doing a full tour anytime <laughs> soon. It's because Carl Pratt's naked, tied to a, <laughs> tied to a chair. Hi, Carl. Hey, coming on. I thought I'd be Danny you to be honest. Come on. So, yeah. No, it's Carl Pratt. We can't get Danny. It's, it's nice to have a dedicated studio. It is. It's very nice. People won't know, but we were sharing that. It won't... But now this is yeah. ours. That's why we painted it, and we got. Wilfred and we've, we've got amazing. a beer fridge, beer fridge. So yeah, beer all the breweries fridge. around Horse of Brewery, Northern Monk, North Brewing. Anyone wants to give us some beer? Guinness, <laughs> Guinness, <laughs> Iron Brew, Iron any, Brew. Any new sponsors? We've got a fridge that needs filling. So if anyone wants to chuck us some, yeah, no free money drinks, required. Just give us the drinks. <laughs> we'll uh, yeah, just send us the drinks and we'll um, we'll hold them up and drink them on this podcast. Good idea, Reese. Um, Ian Bleece. Announced as the sporting director for the Rhinos recently. Uh, I'll start with you, uh, Chris. What were your initial thoughts when this appointment was made? I don't know. I've been a bit... With, I think when we did the announcement that they were going to get one, I'm a bit like, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> you, were, you were quite lost, weren't you? Because you just, like, you just didn't know, know who, who could be named for it. I'll be honest, my initial... I, I don't know that much about him, or didn't. I've done a bit of reading up, but... <clears throat> I almost didn't like the strategy of raiding Salford. I know some people do. I think Reese quite likes it. <laughs> oh, but well, no, I just... I'm only smirking because I'm like, it's, it's I, <laughs> we are just taking their best assets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's obviously the rumour now going around the next asset that we'll steal. But, you know, I heard someone, was it Blake Austin said Leeds City Devils. Yeah. Don't uh, mention him on I, this I, podcast. Like, no, no, come on. I've got some thoughts on that. Is I, don't it think, I don't think that'll happen. But um, I think he's, having read up, he's the best qualified person in the country for the job. So I agree. hats off to them. I, I think um, it's it's a good move for him at his stage of his career because 
Mm-hmm. What more can he do at Salford? Obviously, yeah, win something, but the odds are stacked against them, aren't they? Yeah. And, and he's done an amazing job there. Um, a, they're still going. <laughs> and Maybe not so much now. No, and they've got... Well, I, I don't know. I think he'll leave a decent legacy yeah, there. Yeah. But I think it's... Um, especially hearing him speak, I think it's a job he's wanted. I mean, who wouldn't if you if you best club that, in the world, right? They've got he's got the most resources in the country. He's got best stadium, um, best fans. But that's kind of why we're a bit wary about stealing Salford's assets. Is it's all right doing it when you're not under the spotlight and you're the underdog? It's a total different kettle of There's fish. A lot of pressure now, isn't it? It leads. Yeah, it's on his shoulders. What did you make of the appointment, Risa? Never Reese. caught that Reese. <laughs> All right. Term of endearment. It's only my mum that calls me that. Um, what did I think of it? I think a bit like Chris, when we, we, we had that discussion probably, what, two, three weeks ago now, where... We're all a bit lost in it. We did mention Ian Blaze as a potential person. It was one of the did list. We? Of, did we? It was no. It was. It was. I think I referenced an article where there was like all these names, and he was one of the names. It was. Did on you it. mention Ian Blaze? Did on so it. we'll we'll, we'll clip there. It. We go. We told you. We didn't ask <laughs> him first. We'll clip it. Um, <laughs> but like Chris says, like when you look at it now, it is the most logical option. I'm really. I and I. I, it's, I don't mean this in a bad way. I'm really pleased it's not been a job for the boys or someone from yeah, the golden definitely. generation. Like it's someone that's. I think what I like about him most, and I didn't realise this, he was an agent as well. Yeah, he was. So he's been a player, he's been an agent in his interview, which I thought he came all across brilliantly well when mm. if you didn't watch the live stream. Um if you could hear it. If you could hear the live stream, yeah. Um that's why we'll do the announcements going forward. Um but he came across incredibly <laughs> well. He mentioned that he's not he's got no interest in coaching, which I found quite a yeah, cool yeah, comment. Yeah, I liked that. And then yeah, I did like that. He really separated himself. Yeah. But then he's what he's done at Salford, he's attracted he's brought across some great players. Obviously, we've now got two of those players in our in our own squad. And he's brought other players along in that in your in your Hastings and your Lafayette and stuff like that. So he's found these gems who all would have fitted into a Rhino side. So what can he do with resources? Well, and I think the challenge here is now can he make that step up? But I do think it was, I think it's a clever, shrewd appointment for the club. It's the right appointment for him in terms of, like Chris said, his, his career. It feels sensible. It feels logical. Um, and I, I really, really like the way he came across that interview. I thought he came across really knowledgeable. Um, he, could, he clearly knew what he was on about, but he's also come in with a, he, he just spoke really well, didn't he? He was, he was, he was like, he wasn't like this club should be a top four. It's this club should be winning. And yeah. there was just little things like that I picked up and going, yeah. right, he gets it. Yeah, he said something he about, um, I want to win. And everybody that works for me, I'm Ask paraphrasing me. here, yeah. has yeah. got to have that mindset. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, he did speak really, really well. And that's a good sign, isn't it? Because he's going to be doing a lot of speaking about things operational-wise. He's, he's basically taking over Gary Edwards, He's running the club. He? Yeah, he's running the club. If you can have that, if I can get that admiration to him just from that interview, like I, I, I'd be really interested to see what he's like behind mm. closed doors because if, if he talks like that... We should get him on the pod. Well, he has been on the we'll get Devils in the Detail pod, so he has been and on the fan shit. podcast before. <laughs> 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 Not like our numbers. Um, so, yeah, look, I think... I, I think everything I know it's only so small things we can get and I can get carried away so easily. Yep, that, that's what we do on this platform. Um, but I think they've nailed this to be honest so far just on the way he's come across his experience there isn't anyone else not, and when I say there's not anyone else out there that meant that this guy was the best and probably the only qualified person really could take this job on in my mind this has happened so quickly I think he was lined up way before this has been lined up for ages absolutely because we it was due to be announced then. last week wasn't it but unfortunately with Rob's passing they didn't Rob, announce yeah. it yeah when, when Gary came out and said it'll be concluded by the beginning of June you're like We've got someone. We did say that, didn't we? We yeah. did say that this. this of course we did. This we, is. We did question the timing, but. Um, and I mean, he's starting next Monday. And yeah. I mean, so he must have. I can't imagine that Lisa done the announcement, approached him, and then Salford have let him go immediately. Like they would have wanted no. some form of handover. No, you're right. You know, come on. We, we've had HR. this guy. There'd have been a notice a... period in there. Yeah, yeah well, we've had this guy. I think. Not to talk about Salford stuff, but I think. Paul Rowley will take over that job mm. at some point. Yeah, I saw an article about them. Yeah. No, they were talking to you about a contract, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, and I think, um, what's the fullback called? 
Briley. 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 He'll end up doing something similar because he's already a player agent, isn't he? Yeah. Yes, he is. So I think I think they'll promote from within. So I know it makes makes it sound like I'm feeling sorry for Salford, but I am a bit. You know what I mean? I, mm. I do feel sorry for them. They get pillaged, don't they, every year? But I don't care if it's a good appointment for us. You know what I mean? So, mm. um, but all the signs are good. Mm. I think um, I won't read it all out, but reading some of the stuff he says. Some people won't like this, but he's going to need a bit of time, isn't he? Of course he is. Absolutely. But the, but the message is crystal clear. Yeah. And I'm sorry, and, and well, you you both know that I've voiced my opinion on, on Rowan and what, <laughs> what I think of him. But, and I do think, we, we spoke about this on text, I think with the, the news we had about Rob, I've, I, we've all had a lot of time reflecting. I reflected on stuff and I just want to go enjoy the Rhinos now. But that yeah. message from, from Ian Blees was crystal clear and obvious don't expect any change he needs to come in and spend he won't make any hasty decisions I think was the word yeah. he said he's going to take time to get to know everyone and he's going to have to report back to the Balkan which re- recommend which any is, changes which is possibly why Gary Etherington's not moved sooner on Rowan I mm. think if he knew that this was happening it's not fair on this guy coming in to make that decision is it no so I know people will be First job, Sack Smith. It's not going to happen. And uh, yeah, and this it's, is coming from someone that's quite happy to keep Rowan in, and also I'm, I would quite happily get. Well, yeah, we're kind of on opposite fences, aren't we? But I think and what, I'm the ref. I think <laughs> I think um, Mills no, no, for me now. <laughs> there's, there's literally no point. No point is there? There's no point going out and 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 to me, you know, chatting at the ground. I think for me, and again, it's more. I've had loads of time to reflect the last couple of weeks. Let's just get behind the lads. Well, there's that, and use it as an opportunity now you just might to get behind the boys. Find and, that the Church of Rowan well, is back. I'm not let's, saying that. Let's, let's, not, let's, <laughs> let's not push the edge too. We'll get some what, badges available. What I'm everyone. saying is you might find an uptick in performances because people are going to get their ass kicked. Yeah. Well, again, and then I think there will be, I would, I would hope there'd be some motivation with Rob, but I, you know, I, I think I don't want to place too that much could pressure. That way as well. Yeah, it? don't want to put too like, much yeah. pressure on themselves. But as I think, as Chris said, it's, any business, if something's going wrong, you bring a consultant in. They get they do it. They do a, a strategic report and then report on the changes that need to be made. It's kind of what he's going to be doing. But in that, in that process, when you know that his, this guy's going to be looking in depth and making decisions, yeah. and you, you're going to go, shit, I better. Well, yeah, I better he, up my game he has said the first thing to change is on the field. Yeah, that's what needs to change performances. So he set his stall out, but. You know, it's you can't expect him to come in and just sack loads of people because it doesn't happen, as Reese says. It just doesn't happen that way, does it? In no. anything, so let him get in. He might come in and decide, yeah, loads of people need sacking and we need to do it quick. But on the flip side, I think he did say there's not a lot of needs changing, mm-hmm. which is true, really, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's a big club. It's got everything there. It doesn't. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. Whether you'd like him or not, or whether you think he's the right coach, Rowan's done some amazing work behind the scenes with mm-hmm. the academy and bringing all that, bringing them all that sort of to, together. Yeah. So we as fans don't really see that, do mm. we? But the foundations are there. It might just need a little tweak and that this might be it. And he might be able to provide that guidance and people might be like, we've got to up his game. And I, I think I think I think they've only got. I only want the people that are going to react. To be honest, exactly. Yeah, the people that, not down tools, but don't don't see this as a point of going. You know what we do, we you know we do, we need to we need to be better. And I think they should, I think they know that anyway. But the people that don't react are not doing it for the badge. No, no. Mm. And so, I think I think we'll see. I think we will see that. I think it's going to be. With what's happened with Rob, I think it's going to be a really weird month. On I the think field. it's going to be. I think the rest of the year, it's, it's going to be emotive, isn't it? Yeah, the, yeah, the, emo- really the emotion tough. in that from everyone. That's from players, coaches, fans. The, the emotion is going to be high. Yeah, higher than it. Yeah, and people and always ask. We sometimes forget that players are human, aren't they? Yeah, and yeah. every human being reacts differently to t- different situations. Mm. I'm sure some players will be. I'm going to play well for they, Rob. Well, they were coached by Rob as yeah. well, quite a few of them in the yeah, academy. Right. Yeah. Or on some played with him. And it might 
weigh really heavy on some other players' shoulders. So I think it's going to be a bit... Make or break. Yeah. Um, but as Reese says, I just want to go and enjoy... Watching them. Watching them again. And I think the changes that are happening means these changes, isn't there? Mm. Um, you've seen it with, not to talk about another club again, but you've seen it with Hull FC. We all laugh at Richie Myler and, and all that, but they've got a new coach. And you can sense from their fans that they're quite happy to go watch now because things... Well, because there's no changes steps, on the no horizon. steps are being taken. Yeah, yeah there's change and there. to improve. And I don't think there's a bigger appointment that Leeds could make than this. It's it's massive. It's, it's absolutely enormous. Um, it's... And I think they've got the right guy. So this, I think that's what we've got to go into the rest of this season with is mm. we're on the right path. Mm. Um, well, just, we can't, we just, can't just, see, let, just let him make the time. Give Absol- him, give him the time. Yeah. To get his feet under the table, making his assessment. Like you said, Chris, he might make it in two weeks. He might go, you know what, I've seen enough, I know what's wrong. Or he might take all the rest of the season. Mm. So I think all we can do yeah. is, regardless of how you feel, especially with the emotions so high at the moment, it's just to get behind the lads on the pitch and support them. And I think people will. I would hope that. I would hope so. It's it's very similar to the time when we announced Rowan. We all on this pod platform, this podcast said he's going to need time. He's going to need at least eighteen months to put things right. Blees might need that. It might not, but it definitely needs a similar. He just needs time to review everything. He's, he's got the keys to the castle, yeah. the women's side, the academy, the, the the men's first team. He's going to need time to review it all. He needs to speak to Rowan. Needs to build a relationship with Rowan to decide. Right, is this the guy for us? Is he going to get a tune out of these players? Blease to me comes across as someone who can give out a bollocking. I do get that vibe from him to say that he doesn't put up any bullshit. He just says, look, this is right, this is wrong, we need to do this. Mm. You know, and you kind of do it by my tune, which is right because at the end of the day, he's the new head honcho. So which, if he thinks things are wrong. Again, might not be I what feel, I feel he's going to tell people. Might not be what people want to hear, but that might, you might see a change in Rowan Smith. Hmm? Because he's been, he was given a massive remit. He might be thinking, "Well, that's off my desk now." Yeah, he might be thinking that, and you know, and again, from the opposite side of the table, someone who's not a big fan of Rowan at all at the moment, I would love nothing more than Rowan to turn turn around and improve this team and and, yeah. and get us to that grand final this year. We know it's possible because of what happened yeah. two seasons ago. In fact, you know, we're not. That far off, probably in the better position than we were in the table then. Well, yeah, we were. So, yeah. we were second bottom. Yeah, so, we were you know, I just, I just think, like you say, like, you know, I, I would love nothing more than that. I, I'm not sure, I'm still not sure I can believe it, and I, and I still want to see well, I'm not sure I can really. Um, <laughs> I do, I do. But, but, like you say, he might just be given the opportunity just to coach, and, but I get, uh, you know, he's got to coach the right things and not be stupid and, and, and stuff, but it could be. A kick of ass, not just for the players, for him, and also giving the focus just to focus on coaching. Mm. Well, yeah, and well, nothing I, more to see. Lee's I, every again, game for people might season. disagree with this, but Ron's not daft. He do, he knows with light up front. Yeah, and he's not been able to fix that last year, has he? No. And Ian Blee's mentioned that as well. He said, "Look, exactly. I want to play. I want to play great, entertaining rugby." But when you played it under Yeston Harris or something to this effect, again, I'm paraphrasing. When it was when he had Jesse Harris, it was on the back of Byron McDermott, and Darren Fleary, yeah, those people exactly. that were creating that so workload. Maybe Rowan might be like, "Great, he can go get me then." He'll go get me rather some props. than it being on him. Any good props at Salford? <laughs> <laughs> there isn't actually, is no. there really? Ollie no, we don't want. They've got loads of ex leads, haven't they? There's Jack Arm and Lloyd and Singleton. There's King Vanilla. and King. Yawa. That's three. I liked King. Um, Singleton. Get nah. single back. I don't think there is, Another but I think, I do, like Eddie's alluded to, that relationship's got to work, hasn't it? But what I, w- I will say is a bit of conflict's not always a bad thing. No, I agree. People disagreeing with each other at that level can sometimes help mm. because you come to, if everything's, if you just all agree with Hunky everything, dory, yeah. there's no counterpoints, is there? Mm. So a bit of a difference of opinion can help. Um, that happened a lot in Brian McDermott's reign, didn't it? Yeah. There was that one a bad a core set of players never. who were knowledgeable and respected, mm-hmm. fighting against him a lot of time, weren't they? Mm-hmm. But more than not, 
it worked because they worked a way through it. So I think they've got to get a relationship as Ian Blee's with everyone there, mm. but it doesn't always have to be rosy, does it? I think it, that's what I'm looking forward to. No, somebody there can from be some, out, outside some friction, yeah. coming in and saying, I don't think you should be doing this or... Yeah, you've done that for a long time, but sure, kick off. That please, That's... please again. Tell him Bring no. Him back. <laughs> no tell Bring him back. Tell Bring him back. Bring him back. Dropped off a bit, haven't they? I'm not Bring happy about back. that. Bring no. him back. No, please. So, no. Blease, you kind of mentioned it previously, then Reese about his experience in signing players from the NRL. I think he's got quite a decent record. You mentioned Croft. He also signed Jackson Hastings. Yeah, Lafay and Lafay. So there's three there. So do you think? That's something that we should be looking forward to because I think in terms of Super League, his record of signing players from there seems to be one of the better. Yeah, in the league. all I'd say is he's got a different sell hmm? than he did at Salford, and it should be better. Should be easier. Should him. be easier. Should be better. Uh, apart of it, I, I think that he certainly I got the knack and negotiating I what, skills. I, I don't know what's easier: working on a shoestring budget at Salford and picking because in, in theory his net should be wider. Yeah. Yeah, right. but restrictions can help sometimes, can't they? Yeah, and that, that's kind um, of what I'm is, thinking about. This is this is why I know. Just jumping, I'm not going to go on about it, but I'm not sure Paul Roll is the answer for Leeds as a coach because it's a different beast, isn't it? So you're yeah, right. Restri- that's always been my reason. restrictions. I've, always said that about Paul I've, I've worked in us. creative industry all my you working have. career, and restrictions help creativity because you've got a hurdle to get over. Mm. So. That's the that's and, the issue, and, isn't and it? And there are some restrictions. There's salary cap. There's quota. Yeah, we've all got salary cap. So that, 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 that's the normal restrictions. But I, I think I do think it will be a challenge moving from a. I mean, Salford are probably spending half the budget that we're spending right if now. That, mm. um, there's, there's also one point to think about while we're all waxing lyrical. He's never had to look after an academy. Yeah, and a women's side. And a, well, they've got a women's side, but they're not very good, are they? Not very good. Um, he's got a lot on his plate, hasn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, Never done a job. I'm not like saying he it. can't do it. I'm, I think he's the right person, but you, it's not a case of automatically looking at what he's done at Salford and it, yeah, translating because it's a, a bigger, bigger job mm. and a more exciting one for him. Yeah, I agree. What areas do you hope that he improves first, Reese? It's the pack props. You Straight know, in the, it, I th- that I, needs severe surgery. I, th- I, think, go, I think he's. He's already really alluded to that in what he said about yeah, the fact that... I agree that, with that. I, you know, think, I feel like he specifically mentioned that one of probably our most feared pack. But yeah, he, but he's already said, look, well, you want to see the flair, but you're not going to get it unless you've so got to go forward. Gonna sign three and it's the only three thing... Props he, next it's week. the only thing he actually probably said about the squad. I think, yeah. You know, other than the message from us to, to us to back him, I don't think, it, from memory, I don't remember him saying anything that specific. So I think... I think hopefully I'm aligned. He's aligned with me in this, yeah. in the, the the department we've got. Mikaledski, absolute hero. You know he's yeah. he's over 100 meters per game this year. He's performing probably at 2022 20, levels quietly again at the moment. Oh, um, but that's it. I think Mick can be better though. He can, no, he absolutely can better. But he, I think he gets better. I'm when not he saying he's not other, good. <laughs> but he will be better when he's got better props yes, with him. Because at the moment, he is, he is taking, he for but he's probably taking 90% it, of the workload at the moment. For the I, I find Holroyd more frustrating, really. Mm. Like, oh, he's not played. It, exactly. And he could be part of that pack, couldn't he, that we're talking about? Well, he's earned the 10 shirt. Yeah. And, uh, um, when, we one, had no issues with him having the 10 shirt. And, I mean, obviously, it's, it's concussions, so you can't mess around with it either. But that, I mean... We need to... Monsters, yeah. We need two Michaledskis. Um, because we could just clone Miss, him. His son is great, but he's not against rubbish teams, yeah. But I, well, though, he's great when we're on top. So, if mm. we're, even if we were being yeah, come on, be a Wigan, wrecking ball, yeah. He's, I wouldn't say luxury, maybe he is a luxury player, but I, I think, think that, I think that's accurate. I think all he'd I need do. is two more props battering the hell out of mm. the opposition so he can come on for 30. Minutes a game, do or, more damage. Um, yeah, it's, that's what's annoying. It's not like it's a bit like what he's saying, it's not that far off, is it? It's no, not that far off. Mm. I think the prop department, oh, there it one. yeah. <laughs> if that, if that, was, that, 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 that has to be his number, if you could do it now, it'd be great. 
whether he can or not, I don't know. We probably don't have salary cap room. But um, I think that coming into the off season, I think that's where they'll be. A bit and focused. I think he'll be ruthless about that. Whoever's, so. whoever's coach, whether Rowan's coach or whatever, it'll be. We because Salford um, punch above the weight in the pack, don't they? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's obviously a philosophy, um, which allows them to play the fancy stuff that they play. Yeah. Um, and that'll come from top. Yeah. Um, and he's an ex-player, and I think he was a bit of a hard nut himself. Mm-hmm. I think he got into a bit of bother at some point, but <laughs> yeah, he did. Um, so that, that's his philosophy. But it's, it's not a bad philosophy. If, no. Um, look at Wigan. Well, they've got seven. Yeah. And four trophies. We're jealous of Wigan. That's awful. What do you feel about the timing of this appointment, Chris? Do you think the timing was right? We've partially discussed this off um, off air, haven't we? But it was obviously mm. set up before. But the timing's right because Gary Hedrington's not a stupid man, is he? No. The club was under so much pressure. So he had... <coughs> excuse me. He had some decisions to make. Sack the coach to appease the fans. Yeah. Which it would have done. But then what do you do? Mm. It's still on him. He, he, it would have still been on him to appoint a new coach because you couldn't have sat the coach and then and then hire the sporting director and then no, that'd have, been, that'd have been a club in disarray, like I said previously. So what that'd he's been done, like any good leader, leader or manager or owner or whatever, he's taken the heat off himself a little bit, but he's actually put the right person in place. Whether it's rushed, whether it was timing was mm. to help him. Mm. Do, you, do you think still right in it? I think taking the pressure off Rowan Smith a bit is right because yeah, whether we like it or not, I think he'll be here till the end of the for year. For the year, yeah, I've accepted that. So now. it's like, what's the point of having all this vitriol, all this thing? And I think it's alleviated it a bit. I think it's an incredibly smart move. Do you think it was a move that was potentially agreed for the end of season, but they've? I, I I agree with Chris. I think this has been agreed for a while, and I thought oh, definitely has. But part, it was think, all agreed too quickly. And I'm thinking out, out on just as we're going along here. I wonder if they've brought it forward. I wonder well, if it was agreed to start at the end next end of the season, or if, and they've gone. Solve it. We need them, you now. Can, can we have him now? Parachute I him think in. Definitely. I think if we'd have been. This top, is a speculation. Top, this, this is not true. We well, don't know if it's true or not. But yeah, I just I think unless it, the truth comes out at a later time, and then, then it we will is absolutely it. true. If we'd have been top three, playing really well, everything's hunky dory. You're not going to announce a sporting no. director in middle of the season, are you? No. no. It would have been at the end of the season. Oh, I'm stepping down. Here's Ian. here's a new structure. Yeah. Blah blah blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what would have happened. So I, I definitely think. To answer your question about the timing, I, I, and part of me is now wondering whether it was a some agreed end of season that brought it forward because Gary's made a probably a good PR decision um, I think to remove himself from it, know. bring a guy in. Yeah. That to be fair, yeah. the reaction from most majority of Leeds fans that I've seen has really been positive. yeah, great appointment. Um, and whilst there are, and, really. you know, there are still people coming on Rowan and whether you're Rowan in or out or not, we know now that's not, not going to change for pretty mm. much of the season. The only thing I could think but, of is if we lose next five, six games in a row. Then he, but then, but then, he then can he's going to make But he's decision, in a position to make that decision, isn't he? But I, I do think the timing of it is... we If we were in the top four, contesting up that top end, I don't think that it's... No, this appointment's not made. So, not so this it's, it's, it's made because they've recognised that something needs to change. Something needed. And it it was pretty much the top of the list for a few years, hasn't it? People have been saying that. Since Kevin, yeah. Well, since Kevin left yeah. it, because we always thought Agar was take it and then he buggered off to New Zealand Warriors. Mm. He's doing quite well there, isn't he? Yeah, he is, yeah. Mm. Um, so what about the relationship between... Blease and Rowan. I kind of touched on it previously when this announcement, before Blease was announced, but when they were talking about another pod, and the potential conflict between the in terms of the squad. But obviously, is is Blease going to have the final say on like we need two I, props? We need. I don't. Two I don't centers. know how it works, but I think what you've got to remember is Rowan Smith. Whether you like him, whether you whatever your opinion of him. He's been around elite coaching setups all his life. Mm. And he said something when it was announced that they were getting one. He said, most 
large sporting organisations and most coaching setups I've worked with in Australia have had disappointment. Have had disappointment. He said, so I welcome it. Mm. So it's... Well, he's not going to say he's not going to welcome it. <laughs> well, if, it could, if he were that bloody minded, he could, couldn't he? And say, yeah, he could have, yeah. I want it to be in control, I'm going. Mm. Yeah. Um, but he's worked in organisations that have had these setups. To, in my mind, it can only help a coach unless you really, really... Unless you want to hold other purse strings. And my my sort of question to your question is, who owns the philosophy? Mm. Because Rowan has built this squad. It's been his recruitment with Gary Heverington, and he's obviously built this squad with a philosophy in mind. And short kickoffs. <laughs> but um, Ian Belize is. We need to think of something short for Ian. Like Ian just feels a bit. I don't know. Belize. 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 Um, IB. Blaster. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that sounds quite good. His, his, his blaster. There you go. Oh, okay. New, new nickname it. for. Not using it. New lock pod yeah. nickname. Um, <laughs> we'll get a bad joke in his the philosophy. Blaster. Might not match what Rowan's is, and th- mm. there will be conflict in that. I think and, so. Um, and, 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 if it, and if it doesn't, then Rowan will go. Because I'm assuming Rowan reports into him. Yeah, after yeah. now he's his new boss. So it's whether it's whether I think you've got to be there's got to be a bit of adapting and overcoming from both parties. I think they've got to probably surrender some of their own philosophies potentially to come to agreement, or it it, it might be a mm. no. This is what I'm seeing because yeah. well, ultimately it's going to be. Ian has to make those judgments on recruitment based on what the coach is saying. It's got to be a collaboration. It's got to be agreement. But equally, they've also got to be married up in what they're all wanting to achieve, not just from winning, but how we play. Yeah. What types of players we go for? Where, field, where yeah. do we prioritise quota spots? Where do we? What's our opinion on youth? And you know, where does the you know the academy coaches then come in at that point and going, look, these you know, there's there's so many yeah. little things that come into this. But ultimately, Ian is the Run to owner of this. Mm-hmm. It's his. He is now the director of rugby and, yeah, or whatever spotting director. The rugby department is his. So ultimately, the book stops with him. Maybe and maybe this is me being optimistic because you you're know, on like, the lockpod. I, I like Rowan Smith. Is that that it actually might make it him shine? Yeah. If you look at, he um, might have better guidance because he's got someone's a you know, because he, he apparently that. from everyone that you speak to, players and things like that. He's a he's a great guy to work with. Mm. So look at again looking at Wigan, Matty P is just part of a cog, isn't he? He's a cog yeah, in that a few there. machine. Mm. Yeah. There's there's four or five I think we mentioned it on yeah, the it pod is. before. There's mm. four or five people there. Whereas what all we've had is Rowan Smith and Gary Heverington. Yeah. There's nothing in between them. And apparently one of Matty P's strengths pyramid. is he doesn't overcoach. He's a man manager. Mm. And he gets the players motivated. Motivated and he he's not over tactical from what I've read and mm. he's got all the people around him to help him with that and his job is to coach and manage the players. Maybe we'll see more that of that. That kind of structure it leads. Because you've got something taken off your shoulders where everything's on you as the coach. I don't know. Mm, yeah. Ma- Ro- maybe it's Ro- wishful Ro- thinking from me. No, potentially. Well, no, Rowan might my, just be left to coach. It's yeah. my wishful thinking. Like yeah. I said, I would love nothing more than Rowan to succeed. Because if happen. Rowan succeeds and the players succeed, then the it's club gonna succeeds. Happen. That's what I want to achieve. And when I say the book stops with Ian, I don't think that means that it's now his fault and not Rowan's if the team aren't performing. But... It's never, he, it's never one person's fault. No, either, it's is it? not. <laughs> but there's ultimately where this team now goes, it is now he is the guy that owns it as a whole because his rugby department is now his. And but his part of his ownership of that is yeah. has he got the right relationship with the coach? Is he happy with the coach? Or is a you know? It, and that's what it co- ha- that's what it comes yeah, down to. I, I might say a bit of conflict. Yeah, might help. Yeah, or I'm- it might help in one or two ways. It might help and go. Look, this isn't working. And we, we go somewhere new, or it might work and the team may improve. And again, I'll stress this I might not like Rowan at the moment, but I absolutely well, I think just everyone want wants everyone it. to achieve, want us to be successful. Yeah. And um, I'll quite happily eat a shirt at the end of the season if, I, if we win a grand final. You can eat a Salford shirt. <laughs> I, I just don't think him coming automatically leads to Paul Rowley signing next year. I think that's. Uh, Paul I could, not be, good I could be totally wrong, but I don't think that's the answer. 
personally. And um, I, I, may, I, Blees, Ian, what are we calling him? Blaster. I'm not calling him that. Nah. Um, he might not think that neither. No. We don't. Mm. We, we just don't know, do we? It's, it's quite exciting, really, isn't it? To think what's could change, yeah. what's going to happen, what's... Um, Grand final. Um, <laughs> you know, but rightly or wrongly, Wigan are the benchmark at the moment, aren't wrongly. they? And, and you just look at their coaching setup and that we've needed coaching and management That setup. whole network that they have there. We've yeah. needed that for quite a while. I think there now. might even be still more to come. More people coming in. Well, I think, like you say, it comes down to then coaching department. Like, you know, does we do any different types of coaches? I think that'll be looked. I think that'll be looked at. I rather, th- rather, every, everything will be sharp, looked, Everything will be looked at. In Very terms soon. Of, look at Warrington. Look at their assistant coaches, mm. Martin Gleeson and. Um, but Richard Marshall. Yeah, experienced coaches and one of the best players there's been. Yeah, for a while. For a many years. I think there like, the, the, the won't there won't be a stone unturned. I hope there's no not a stone unturned, but I think that the role that he's now got to do is is not just about the coach, the team. Yeah. It's about the backroom staff. It's how we operate on a weekly basis. It's how it's how things are done on the training pitch. It's how how things are run behind the scenes. There's so mm. many cogs that he's got to go and through. And I don't like to turn. diss him because he's done so much for the club, but that's maybe where Gary's sort of dropped off a bit last few years mm. not being in control of there's been big everything. things to focus on because they've exactly, gone through yeah. covid and the yeah, finance and side of things and, and that's our, not our a bi- small job to take the club through that journey our, you know? and our biggest strength was his biggest weakness in covid mm. because of the hospitality and yeah yeah you know the ground shut down the ground the ground we're only um, not even a year old was it 2019 and even the the <laughs> ground being rebuilt yeah. So there's a lot of things that have happened, isn't there? And mm-hmm. it's people might say, well, that's just excuses. It's not, is it? It's reasons. There's reasons. These things just because people don't like to hear these things those happen. Reasons. And it can com- it can compound itself into sort of where we are now. Yeah. Um, and where we are now is four, six points off the topper end of the six. <laughs> You're damn right. So, well, I don't think we should be giving up on this season just nope. yet. I think. It's given me a bit of a lease of life, I have to admit. And like I said, I've had, we've always had a lot to believe of time. again. Yeah. No, I'm not starting to believe again. Um, <laughs> I've had a lot of time to reflect. Like I said, I just want to go out and enjoy watching it now. But I do think that this has. I am. I am feeling a bit more invigorated a bit now, and that. And it'll be there's a bit of hope at the moment for me. And it'll be good to hear. I'm not saying he'll be doing press conferences every week, but it'll be good to hear the noises coming from him. Um, I think he'll be quite guarded, won't he? But. He should speak to us. He should I, definitely speak to us. I, I I think we won't hear from him a lot. I think we'll hear from him when we need to hear from him, but probably more so than we have. But when he Gar- sacks someone, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I think we'll hear from him more than we we'll probably hear from Gary. Should call him Grim Reaper. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like you say, I think player-wise, it's a really interesting rest of the season. And those that don't stand up. See you later if you don't want to stay. Do you think that's my next question? Do you oh, think? Sorry, I've led you onto that. It is a nice tangent. Do you think Blaster will have any kind of um, oh, impression on new players this year? Anyone leaving this year? Because I, I think that he will. I think something. I think he'll. I know we're we're kind of at the halfway point now, but I do envisage some players leaving. Kind of like when Kevin came in and we got rid of Matt Parcel and. Brought Rob Louie and that kind of reshuffle of the pack. I, 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 I can envisage that happening. I, I, what a swap! I, I kind of hope not because I don't think we need another rebuild. I don't think I don't think we're that far off. Mm. I think any player that doesn't want to be here gets enough. I don't think there's that many. I don't think there's a lot of lot of. I don't see it myself. There might be a few that. I, I don't know. The squad doesn't need a massive overhaul. We're not talking. About I could see us signing at least squad. one pro. If we could. I'd, you know, I'd, 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 I'd fall in love with him quite quickly if we signed a prop, to be honest, mm. and a good prop. Um, we don't have a lot of cap. fall in love with him? Yeah, because... Do you think he's a good-looking bloke? Uh, I'm not quite sure, actually. No. He dresses well. He does dress well, doesn't he? Oh, I think, blue I think number, he's a, the blue and number tie went well. I think, that's I think a, he's a good-looking bloke. I think that's bloke. a Salford thing. Paul Rowley's quite a well-dressed man, isn't he? Yeah, he is, yeah, actually. Is so maybe he'll bring a bit of that in. Blaster likes a what you could waistcoat, <laughs> doesn't he? Like yeah, a Southgate I think, waistcoat. I think that's what I'd like to see a bit more of is... Maybe that's the thing. Maybe Rowan needs to put a suit jacket and. Nice Do you not see him at the grand final? He looks so awkward when he had to wear a suit when he walked out of the team. He looks weird without a cap. 
Yeah, there's that. Well. Every time he's yeah. got his cap on, his head well, looks Ian almost Blees, as big as mine. Did, did Ian Blees get rid of Ian Watson for wearing his? Yeah, no idea, but was that was that, a good was decision. Was that the main reason? I think it was <laughs> wearing the cap too long, <laughs> pointing his ears. <laughs> no, he puts them on. Oh, oh, kids, kids, tuck them in. Maybe anyway, bring it, it, bring it, bring it back around. Um, Just saying, Blaster is a very well dressed man. If he if he signed a prop, I'd be over the moon. And, but I, I think I, I really think I, he but will. But we've got restrictions. We've got we're very tight to the salary cap. So if we sign a prop, someone's got to go. Donaldson. I don't think I'll give you enough cap space to to give bring you a sort of prop. You bring it, in. It, again. But, it, it does come back to we don't know whether what his remit is with targeting players. Mm. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like he's got the nous as a former agent and all that. But is it going to be him saying, "I want you to get that player"? Mm. I think it, it was, no, he'll be he'll be hidden to go. I think no, be, I th- there'll be a collaboration between it, him and Rowan going. Rowan going. I think I need this, and him going. You know what? You're right. Actually, I'll go. No, but I've actually got, I've heard that this person's available. What What do you think about that? There's going to have to be a bit of to and fro between the two. Yeah. But if he comes back of a prop, if he comes back of a prop at some point this year, some, someone's going to have. Someone's that. got I to can, go. I can see that happening. I definitely can. So, I, but I, I'm adamant that someone's got to go for us to bring a prop in, especially if you're wanting a prop to be a starting prop on a Ledsky's level. You're talking money. You're talking potentially quota spot. We don't have any quota spots unless no, we release we don't one. Have a spot. I can't English, think of anyone in super. I can't think of many in Super League that would come across mid-season at the moment. From yeah, but that's, maybe that's where he can pull a rabbit. But, out of the hat. but maybe, but look, and he will, and that and that'll be a a test of his ability if he does. Oh, I'm uh, not sure who's available. Not a test, but, but yeah, really but, it doesn't really matter, does it? No. If he does bring a prop, in, I'll be over the moon. Absolutely, I but I, I think there's shifting and moving to be done for that to happen. But that's his job. Yeah, there were some interesting things that Gary said as well about Ryan Hall, and that was this week, so it's current. Um, about us lacking leadership, mm. and that mm-hmm. was one of the main reasons that he's brought brought Hall back enough. for a year. Uh, and it's right, isn't it? Really, we've we've said that on mm. match reviews that. Mm. So I'd like him to target that area as well. Some leaders, we've got players that can do it as well, which is. I think what's been frustrating. Yeah. Um, interesting times. Absolutely is. So just to finish up, what are your expectations for the rest of the year with Blaster in this role? For oh God's sake, shut up. Um, <laughs> it's going to catch on. It's not going to catch he's, on. He, he is, because he's going to have a pin badge available. He's, 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 already, he's already had one made. He's been doing it on his laptop while we've been in here. Although Ian this, Blaster Blues. That's although this, it, is a, Blaster. this is a nuclear bunker, so there is no signal Sounds in more like an... Uh, um, guy from EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> um, expectations. Um, Reese, come on, you're on the lot pod. No, I'm, I'm full positivity, full delusion. No, I'm, my my expectations. I've not I've not thought about that. To be honest, I thought I think thought about what expectations the rest of the All year. Right. I think that, like I said, the the news in the the last couple, couple of weeks with with Rob passing. My reflection on on the Rhinos has changed quite a lot in those two weeks, and to the point I just want to go and enjoy watching Leeds play rugby right now, and I, that's changed how I'm approaching criticism or how I think of people in that respect. My my expectation is that we need to, if I'm going to put say, say something, is we need to go out and win these next games. They're all, you know, I think Lee, you, you, we shouldn't underestimate Lee. They're a good team. We can't fear Lee. But not saying fear, I I'm not I saying don't. underestimate, but the, the next three games are very winnable games. I still, I am adamant that the true test of where this squad is, is the fourth game in this. Uh, I can't Warrington. Think, Warrington. That's the true measure for me of where this team... Smash Warrington. Yeah, I do. But that, that, that's for me is the true measure of where we are uh, as a team. If we win these games and then we go out and we to play Warrington, who are good this year... You have to admit they've got well, yeah, Burgess has got them playing stuff. really well. Other than, on Saturday, other but, than the yeah. Charles got found, they were terrible. But that for me is the true move. And I think once the, once we play that game, I'll be able to give you an honest ex, uh, honest expectation of where I think we are because I, I I feel it's so much has changed. My opinion of Rowan at the moment is still low. But again, I'm not going into it. I'm trying to change my reflection on it. Um, but I don't think I can give you an expectation until we've played that wire game, Chris. I'm not having much expectation for the league game. I don't know what's going to happen there. They've got a bit of a pass for me on that. I just It's either going to be a hammering 
by Leeds because of the emotion. Mm -hmm. A bit like it was at the MND round last year. Yeah. Or it's going to be a bit of a slog. Because, so the league game, I'm, I don't know. I'm kind of writing that off as in I ain't got a clue. Mm. The expectation is, I think we'll, we'll beat Hull and London. I think we'll beat Warrington. I think, and I Lee. think, I, I'm not even <laughs> predicting a league thing. I think you're right about the league because it's not, I think for Lee, the, the, the league game's going to be the first sellout since Rob's JJB's yeah, yeah, testimony. I, I just, I just don't, I, I, I can't, I, it's difficult to put an expectation on the game because I'd, it's not, we're not, I mean, unfortunately I'm on holiday and I'm trying to change it, but I don't think I can. But where are you going on holiday? I'm in France. Um, but that game for me is probably not really about the result in general. No, that, but, that's kind of what I mean. And But moving in, you're dead right, that Warrington game's a marker. Um, I expect us to get fourth or fifth. Mm. And I think... We can make a dent. We could have a real dig. I don't. I don't think this season's written off. That no at chance. All. Like, it's really tight, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it is tight, um, and it is. But, but I th- I, Wig- I, Wigan will drop drop some over next month. Particularly on the players. They've got to play twice at the end of the season. Yeah, they? they've <laughs> they'll, got it coming. They'll they'll drop some. That could have really dented Warrington's confidence. I hope so. They've got time to rebuild it back up. I just think I think we've got an opportunity to build our confidence. Oh yeah, we've got 100%. an opportunity to start playing the rugby, better rugby, and playing the right areas. And, but uh, I won't believe any of it yeah. until I've seen and us do it against Warrington. What better fitting tribute to Rob if the players dig in? Yeah, you know, and out of like the adversity, you use it, don't you? Yeah, and the inspiration be it. they should be using it. Um, so I don't know I'm, I'm quite looking forward to the rest of the season like you said just go out and enjoy it I, I'm looking forward to Hull mm. good food at Hull apparently I, I, it's and really the, really expensive than this, what the food in the stadium yeah but it's meant to be very good yeah. so <laughs> expensive because it's so good what you yeah. pay for is what you get I don't know I well, think we're going to win the grand cut. final of course you do so that's my that zero percent. Yeah, it is Just zero percent and a nine brew. Yeah. <laughs> Two of the best what, drinks. What a mix, by the way. Nine brew with a Guinness. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna mix them together. <laughs> Some kind of weird shandy. Gin brew. Gin brew. Yeah. Blasted top mate. I like it. <laughs> to overcome that drink, Northern Monk. If you do want to sponsor us, please. If anyone, yeah, we'll mention it again. <laughs> well, before we end this, we have a fridge that needs filling. So if anyone wants to send us free drinks. <laughs> please do um thanks everyone thanks for watching thanks for listening um please do subscribe to us on youtube we are chasing that 1000 uh subscribers so please head over to youtube search the lock pod and hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell you'll be notified every time one of our videos does get uploaded to the channel please head to spotify as well and give us a five star rating it just boosts us up those podcast charts if you've enjoyed this podcast, if you enjoy what me, Chris and Reese do, please consider as well subscribing to our Patreon. All of our content will never be behind a paywall. It's just if you enjoy what we do and you want to chuck us a couple of quid, please feel free. The details will be in the pinned comment below here on YouTube and also the details are available on our X at Lot17A. That's it from us. We'll be back to review the whole game. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching and take care.